Hello everyone, currently I am on business travel, so I make this video to substitute the class meeting this week. So in this time I would like to show you the combustion in compressed ignition engine. So last time we talked about the combustion in spark ignition engine and now we will talk about another type of the internal combustion engine which is the compression ignition engine or Usually it's called uh, diesel engines. This is the essential features of the diesel combustion process. So, firstly, the fuel is injected by the uh, fuel injection system into the engine cylinder. And usually it is at the end of the compression stroke. So, just before the desired start of the combustion or the desired CA50 timing. And then, because this liquid fuel is injected at very high velocity, so much higher than the velocity of the surrounding gases, which consists of air, residual, and maybe EGR. So because of this very high velocity difference, there will be a force acting on the liquid fuel that can break this fuel into small droplets. And this process is called atomization. And then this small droplet or small drop will penetrate farther into the high temperature and high pressure uh, air mixture. So once again, this fuel injection is at the end of the compression stroke. So the mixture inside the cylinder, which consists of air and residual and maybe EGR, are already at high pressure and high temperature. And then, because of this high temperature surrounding condition, there will be a heat transfer from the mixture of air and residual into the fuel. So the fuel uh, drop will vaporize and it will form a fuel vapor. So in the end of this step, there will be a mixture of air, uh, fuel vapor, residual and maybe EGR. And then, the compression stroke uh, farther move toward uh, the uh, top dead center then the temperature will further increase and at some point the mixture of air and fuel vapor will ignite spontaneously so in this step you can see the principal difference between the spark ignition and uh, diesel combustion engines so because of high pressure and high temperature the mixture of air and fuel paper ignites spontaneously and this spontaneous ignition occurs after a certain delay period so this delay period is the period between the start of injection and the start of the combustion and then once uh, a spontaneous ignition occurs, it will uh, be followed by a further combustion process. There will be a release of the heat from the chemical process or from the combustion process, and then the cinder pressure uh, increases. And then uh, the combustion uh, process uh, will continue uh, consuming uh, the remaining fuel inside the cylinder chamber. The consequent compression of the unburned portion of uh, the charge uh, shorten the delay before the ignition for the fuel and air. So this makes sense because of the high uh, pressure and high temperature. So it will uh, shorten the delay uh, period. So this uh, high temperature, high pressure also reduce the evaporation timing of the remaining liquid fuel. So it means that the fuel that is injected later will have a, a shorter evaporation time. And then on the injection uh, will continue until the desired amount of the fuel has entered the cylinder. And you will see later on that in diesel combustion engine, the amount of the fuel is used to control the level of uh, required load. So in this case, 
the atomization, vaporization, fuel air mixing, and combustion continue until essentially all the fuel has passed through each uh, process. And then, uh, in addition, mixing of the air remaining in the cylinder with burning a gas or an already burning gas continue through out the combustion and expansion process so uh, in this case you will see that the fuel burning rate uh, will be controlled by the rate at which this fuel will mix with air that's why in diesel combustion the com uh, it's also called a, a mixing control combustion so uh, this uh, combustion process uh, occurs uh, under non-premix uh, combustion so or non-premix mixture so because the fuel is injected right before uh, the piston hit the top dead center firing and then it will mix right away and then the combustion will occur uh, right after the start of the injection so and the, there is a ignition delay there so in this case uh, it is uh, very well known that this uh, diesel combustion is called non-premix combustion and sometimes it's also called uh, a diffusion flame this is because this uh, gaseous fuel so the fuel that has uh, vaporized and mixed with air so both must diffuse into each other and then react that's why it's called diffusion flame and then this is uh, some important consequence of this combustion uh, characteristic first is since uh, the injection uh, coming is uh, just before combustion start so there is no knock limit here so there is no knock limit and then Second one is that since the injection timing is used to control the combustion timing, so it is required that the ignition delay uh, be uh, kept uh, short. That's why uh, there will be a parameter that is used to uh, determine the reactivity of this diesel fuel, which is called CT number. And then, since the combustion process occurs within and around the fuel spray, so in this case, the engine torque can be controlled by varying the amount of the fuel injected per cycle I already mentioned previously. And then and the next one is that as the amount of the fuel injected per cycle is increased, so you will see there is a problem in diesel combustion that we don't have in spark ignition engine combustion that there will be a formation of the soot here. There will be a formation of the soot that is one of the product of the emission in diesel combustion. And uh, in this diesel combustion, uh, because uh, the combustion right after the fuel is injected, so we can set this combustion process under lean condition, which means that we can have a benefit in terms of the thermodynamic uh, efficiency here. Now let's see the type of uh, diesel combustion system. So generally there are two types of uh, diesel combustion system. One is called direct injection engine. So in this case the fuel is injected directly into the main chamber. And then the second type is uh, indirect injection engine. So in this case uh, there will be a small chamber so usually it is connected through a small nozzle or maybe couple nozzle and then the combustion uh, is initiated inside this uh, small pre-chamber and then the flame will uh, uh, propagate uh, further through the nozzle and then it will flow out to the main chamber uh, and it will be looks like a flame jet there and this indirect uh, injection system is usually used uh, in small uh, diesel engine. This feature is showing a different uh, variety of the direct injection system. The feature on the left side, A, here is uh, 
a direct injection system and with a quiescent uh, condition so no uh, slow no tumble of the mixture inside the chamber and then you can see there uh, that uh, there are more than uh, one nozzle so in here you can see that we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there are ten nozzles here and then on the b you can see in here that uh, there is a moderate air soil here and then the injector is also located centrally but it is in slightly inclined and compared to a this b might have a smaller number of the nozzle and then this role uh, is supposed to help enhancing the mixture uh, the mixing process between the fuel vapor and the air and then on the right side here it is uh, operated under high uh, air soil and a uh, special feature on the C if you look at on the profile of the piston here so the fuel is injected uh, and then toward this point and then the fuel flow will follow the feature of the uh, piston so some of the fuel will flow uh, downward and then some will flow upward and if you see the feature of this uh, piston in the upper side so the fuel that move upward here will be re-enter into the uh, center of the chamber and that's why this piston profile is usually called as the re entrant so it's mean uh, it is used to guide the fuel spray to re-enter into the uh, center of the combustion chamber so uh, there are pros and cons of this re entrance uh, good thing for this uh, re-entrant is it will help enhancing a fuel air mixture but compared to the open chamber on on the system of A so this re-entrant uh, piston uh, has a higher piston surface area which is not good uh, in the perspective of the wall heat transfer through the piston so if you remember that wall heat transfer here is a Q uh, equal to h time a time delta t so assuming it has similar h and similar delta t between the system of a and c system of c has a higher a so which result in higher wall heat loss through the piston surface this is the example of the indirect injection system so on the system of a you can see in here there is a pre-chamber it is at the top of the main chamber and then uh, this one if you see here this is a, a kind of a glue plug this glue plug is usually used to assist the combustion of the diesel especially during cold uh, temperature so for example like during the winter and then on the right side here so it's similar here but if you see here the system on the right side it has different feature of different feature of the piston and also if you see the shape of the nozzle so you would expect no slow flow of the air inside the pre-chamber but if you look at back the system on the left side here you will expect seeing a, a slow flow or tumble flow it's depending on which axis we use so the flow will enter the pre-chamber i believe it will uh, rotate like what i draw in blue line here so but if you see on the right side the flow of the air will just enter straight toward this uh, injector uh, tips 
And then uh, this table is uh, showing a different combustion type. So uh, the first category here, if you see the size, so direct injection system is usually used for a uh, large uh, engine. So in this large engine, because we don't need to have a very high uh, combustion speed, uh, most of the large engine, or not, mo not most, maybe some of the large engine uh, are operated under quiescent condition with a uh, multi-spray. And then on the second column here is uh, for medium uh, size, so it is still with a uh, multi spray and medium swirl. And then for the small engine, because uh, it requires a high uh, combustion speed, usually it is uh, uh, equipped with a high swirl and a multi spray. And then on the right side, you can see a system with a uh, Isroll and M type. I believe this is a special type of the combustion system developed by M uh, A N. And then the next one is an example of the uh, system with a pre chamber and then also the pre chamber but with a swirl inside. And usually it is used for a small diesel engine. And then the next category here based on the cycle uh, large engine. It's usually designed for two as well as four stroke uh, operating condition. And then for medium and uh, small engine, usually it is operated under four stroke. And then uh, you can also operate the large engine with turbocharger or just naturally aspirated. S here stands for supercharger. And then for a system with a pre-chamber, uh, it can also operate it both, so either natural aspirated, so without turbocharged or turbocharged. And then you can see also the speed range. You know well already that for the large engine, usually it is operated under low engine speed. If you remember why, so because we need to maintain uh, or we need to uh, have a similar or uh, maintain a uh, same uh, piston speed so because large engine has a larger or longer stroke we need to have a smaller engine speed here and then for the smaller uh, engine size because the stroke is shorter you can uh, operate this engine at high uh, engine speed and then the next one is the poor stroke and so on so look at next one here is the compression ratio usually a diesel engine has a higher compression ratio than spark ignition engine uh, you know well that uh, there is no knock issue on this diesel uh, combustion so you can increase the compression ratio to have a better uh, thermodynamic efficiency and then the next uh, category here is looking at the chamber so for the large engine Usually it has an open piston bowl or shadow disc piston. And then for the medium uh, diesel engine size, usually it has a bowl in a piston shape. Uh, it might also has a re uh type piston bowl to enhance the mixing between air and the fuel. And then uh, for the airflow pattern, large engine, uh, some large engine are operated under quiescent condition. And then for the medium and small engine, uh, usually a straw uh, is used to enhance the mixing as well as uh, the combustion rate. And then next one is the number of uh, nozzle holes. So for the large engine, Usually it has more uh, nozzle number than the medium and small uh, engine size. For the uh, engine with the pre-chamber, uh, usually it has a single nozzle here. So this nozzle connects the pre-chamber with the main chamber. And then the last category you can see in here is the injection pressure. 
for the large engine uh, usually it is a very high injection pressure the reason for this one is uh, because you need to inject more fuel and usually it has a slightly higher nozzle diameter so to uh, enhance the atomization process so we need to have a very high injection pressure compared to the medium and small engine which usually uh, have a smaller nozzle size and then the next one you can see in here also the uh, injection pressure for the indirect uh, uh, diesel injection system so uh, let's take a look into more detail about the diesel combustion right now so uh, because of the uh, advanced technology so we can uh, now do a study easily in this combustion process using a uh, visual uh, tools there so that we can see a fuel spray we can see the flame behavior uh, clearly and then when we combine this uh, uh, experiment type uh, with the analysis of the engine uh, cylinder pressure data so we will have a better uh, description of this combustion process we can build a model for the combustion process of this uh, diesel combustion and then similar to the one in spark ignition engine we can also use the concept of the heat release rate here to understand the diesel combustion process so this uh, heat release rate is uh, obtained from the measure cylinder pressure so it's uh, the same as the one in the spark ignition engine process and also recently uh, simulation uh, uh, was also used massively to support the design and analysis of a diesel combustion uh, system. So this feature is showing the uh, record of the diesel flame. Uh, on the left side, on this A here, so this uh, showing the flame from a single spray so is coming from the left. Uh, side here so this is for large uh, diesel engine condition so there is no stroll here if you see on the spray direction it just move uh, simply from left and right there is no uh, velocity upward or downward so here the condition uh, in which the spray is injected is at quiescent condition and then on the B, you can see in here, uh, there are about uh, maybe three or four spray there. Let me take a look here. Oh yeah, there are four spray here on B. And then you can see in here, there will be a, a swirl and the swirl is counterclockwise. So that's why it's deflected the spray uh, counterclockwise as well. And then C here is an example of the combustion system uh, built by MAN. So they call this the M direct injection system here. And then next one, the last row here, D here, this is an example of the combustion with the pre-chamber. So looking at the size, I believe the pre-chamber is on the left side here. And then there will be a nozzle connecting the left chamber to the right chamber. And then the flame will uh, propagate exit this pre-chamber on the left and and then uh, propagate into the main chamber on the right side this swing the system that was used to record the flame on the previous slide so on the system a uh, it is a quiescent condition and it is a large engine with an open bowl and you can see the schematic of the spray here it has one, two, three, four. It has ten uh, nozzle here for the system A, and then system B. It has a smaller nozzle number. However, it's apply a uh, air swirl that enhance the uh, fuel air mixing process, and the swirl direction is counterclockwise. And then system in C here, uh, it has a different shape of the piston bowl 
and then D uh, was uh, the one with the pre-chamber. So the pre-chamber is on the left side here, and there is a nozzle connecting the pre-chamber into the main chamber here. And then the next one. So uh, this uh, figure is showing the schematic of the fuel injection profile uh, along with the heat release rate and the resulted cylinder pressure. So let's take a look first on the uh, shape or profile of the injection uh, process here. So it is represented by this line, the dash line. So this one is showing the uh, profile of the fuel injection. And then, uh, as I mentioned to you at the beginning of this presentation, the combustion will start after a certain uh, delay uh, from the start of the injection and this is the delay you see so the solid uh, black line here this one is the uh, heat uh, release rate so you see here there is a spike of the heat release rate and the spike you will see uh, later on in the slide that this is because of the uh, premix combustion because of the premix combustion, this spike, and then it will follow by a relatively low heat release rate. And this one is called a mixing a control combustion process. And then if you compare between the profile of the injection and the profile of the heat release rate, so you can see in here that the period of the heat release rate is uh, longer than the period of the injection here. Then, uh, because of the combustion process, there will be an increase or the change of the slope of the cylinder pressure here. You can see in here, it's changed the slope. So, and this one is because of the combustion process inside the chamber. So, uh, looking at the uh, pref uh, on the chart in the previous slide so we can see here that the total burning period is significantly longer than the fuel injection period and then the absolute uh, burning rate increases proportionally with uh, increasing engine speed so uh, this uh, is based on the test data as well as uh, the simulation result so this means that on crank angle basis, the burning interval remains uh, essentially constant for a uh, different engine speed. So it's mean that uh, at, for example, if the uh, burning uh, period at 1500 RPM is, let's say, uh, 40 degree crank angle at 3000 RPM, it's also about similar at 40 degree crank angle. And then uh, the other characteristic that we have on this diesel combustion is that the magnitude of the initial peak of the burning rate uh, in the previous diagram, so the spike of the heat release rate, this is depends strongly on the duration of the ignition delay period. So because during the ignition delay period, we have uh, uh, a time that control the uh, premix uh, mixture and this premix mixture will be burned and this uh, premix mixture burning control the spike of the heat release rate so this figure is showing the schematic of the rate of the injection on the top and the bottom is the rate of the burning so in this case the rate of the injection is uh, broken down into several segments for example segment number one and then segment number two and so on and then on the uh, feature on the bottom side is showing the mapping of each uh, rate of injection segment into the rate of the burning so as you can see in here uh, there is also a dash line so the mixture under this dash line is a ready to go mixture for burning however the ignition will start until a certain period here 
so in this one so between this point and this point it is an ignition delay so the mixture that is injected and ready to be burned uh, between this pair this uh, period of a and period of b this will control the spike of the heat release rate and then you can see also the burning uh, timing for uh, other uh, segment for example number nine this is showing the the burning on the segment of number nine there okay so this is a detail a more detailed explanation about the heat release rate uh, for uh, diesel combustion so let's start by the point a here this is where the uh, diesel is injected so it's called start of injection or soi and then a point b here where we have the start of the combustion soc okay so between soi and soc we have a period here which is called the ignition delay period so the the length of this ignition delay period control the level of the spike of this uh, premix heat and then uh, once the premix heat ends there will be a further combustion process and this further combustion process is controlled by the mixing process between the fuel that is injected later and uh, the air it's therefore this combustion period is also called a mixing control combustion and then there will be uh, another combustion uh, type here that occur late so it's called late combustion uh, period or late combustion phase so let's take a look now uh, a bit about the heat uh, release rate analysis so similar to the one in spark ignition engine so usually we can get a, a test data of the cylinder pressure and then we can apply the first law of thermodynamic and the conservation of mass to uh, get the heat release rate based on the cylinder pressure test data so this equation 10.2 is the first law of thermodynamic inside the uh, diesel combustion chamber so this is the heat transfer uh, through the chamber wall and this is the work uh, to or from the piston ETV and this one is the fuel energy so M time H so H here is the lower heating value of the fuel and then du over dt here is the chain of the of the energy of the mixture inside the chamber so when analyzing or when applying this equation 10.2 we can assume that temperature uh, is uniform at each instant time during the combustion process so uh, this process will result in a net heat release rate or sometimes it's also called apparent heat release rate because in this case the heat release rate is lumped together with the uh, wall heat transfer so uh, back again to equation 10.2 i put uh, this equation 10.2 at the uh, top uh, right uh, side here so if u and hf in equation 10.2 are taken to be the sensible internal energy so once again it is similar to the one in spark ignition engine then the dq over dt become the difference between the chemical energy or heat release rate and the heat transfer uh, from the system so in here we can write it on dqn and here uh, stand for net so this one is the chemical heat release rate minus the wall heat transfer 
equal to PDV plus DU over PT. And then we can apply the ideal gas formula here and assuming also constant CV. Uh, and then we can finally, finally we can get equation 10.6. So in this case, we can get the net heat release rate or apparent heat release rate based on the measure uh, pressure uh, from the test data. And then gamma here, we can uh, vary depending on the condition of the mixture. Uh, this is in, namely the pressure, temperature, and composition. So this feature is showing an example of the integrated heat release rate and, uh, or yeah, integrated heat release rate. So at the most top here, you have a chemical uh, heat release rate. So here, you can see in here at the end, so assuming this is in the exhaust valve opening, it doesn't reach 100%. And the difference here uh, is due to the combustion efficiency. So there will be some unburned fuel at the end of the uh, expansion stroke. And this uh, unburned fuel might be uh, uh, an hydro unburned hydrocarbon emission uh, and then going out of the engine or it might burn later in the uh, exhaust uh, process and in the uh, exhaust system and then uh, next one you can see in here this is the area here this showing the uh, portion of the wall heat transfer so it can be about 10 to 15 percent and then the next one here it is the portion of the heat uh, loss to do or going into the crevice and then it will go to the crankcase in terms of the blow by and then this one the line at the bottom here is showing the qn so this is the net or apparent heat release rate so this is the chemical heat release rate minus the wall heat transfer Next one, let's take a look on the conceptual model of uh, direct uh, injection diesel combustion. Uh, feature on the left side here is showing the schematic of the fuel spray. And then on the right side is showing the corresponding uh, fuel uh, injection profile and the heat release rate profile. And then on, back again to the left side. so. The dark color here represent the liquid fuel and then the light uh, dark color here represent the uh, vapor and then you will see also a dash line that represent the diffusion flame and then the dot uh, point here represent the uh, premix flame. So the first feature here is showing the spray at one degree after the start of injection so asi here stand for the after start of the injection so one degree after the start of injection the fuel is uh, mainly still under liquid form so this dark color and then this is at two degree and then at three degree after the start of the injection that liquid that uh, was injected earlier it's already evaporated here some of this you see a light color there a gray color and then at four degree so most uh, fuel on the leading edge here has been evaporated and then 4.5 degree more uh, fuel uh, has been evaporated and then at five degree you see now a dot uh, point here this uh, area represents the uh, premix combustion. So in the fuel, this has already been uh, evaporated. So it's mixed with air, but still at rich mixture. V here can be between two uh, and four. And then because of high temperature, high pressure, it's ignited uh, spontaneously. And then uh, this spontaneous ignition uh, generate a 
spike of the heat release here and then uh, other crank angle you still see the uh, premix combustion and then this premix combustion is followed by the diffusion flame this diffusion flame occurs uh, at the periphery of the spray so this test line so this is uh, diffusion flame and then later you see there uh, a bigger spray and it's still surrounded by diffusion flame and this one is if i look at on the right side this one is the diffusion flame okay and then we can see in more detail about the structure of this flame in the next slide so we can start from the left side so at this timing the fuel liquid is still injected from the left side and then there will be a atomization because of the velocity difference between the liquid fuel and the surrounding air and then the surrounding air which is hot here is entrained by this high velocity liquid and then entering the uh, fuel spray form here so at this region there will be a rich mixture with the fee of about four and then going to the right here this a uh, rich fuel mixture will also entrain the product of the combustion so this one is just part of the combustion product and the combustion was incomplete so it still contain some uh, reactive uh, species or sometimes it's called a radical species and then it will increase the temperature of the mixture further here from 825 to 1150 and then later it will increase the temperature at about 1600 kelvin at this temperature there will be a chemical process that release about maybe 10 to 15 percent of uh, the chemical heat and then this partly combustion mixture will move farther down and then there will be a block of the hydrocarbon fragment here and because of this rich mixture combustion and then also additional heat transfer from a radiation of the surrounding gas it will form a particle with this usually called soot here so this is the zone where the soot is maximum and then this piece here will move outwardly toward the diffusion flame here and then there will be a diffusion process between this uh, soot particle and then uh, radical species and so on with the air from outside of the spray and then there will be a further combustion within this diffusion flame front so you can see in here there will be a rich premix flame within the spray so in this this one and then it will be followed by a diffusion flame surrounding the spray this one another feature of this diesel combustion is what is called a leaf of length so this is the distance between the nozzle tips and the start of the combustion so it is somewhere here so where we have a premix flame so this one what is called leaf of length
Okay, so two important practical areas to be incorporated above a conceptual model of the display, which can be used to enhance the diesel combustion process. First is, you might know already, is the air swirl. So this, this air swirl is usually used to speed up the fuel uh, air mixing process especially as the engine size is uh, reduced and then we need to have a maximum uh, uh, combustion rate to do higher uh, engine uh, speed. So let me draw a schematic here. So I have this top view and then let's say I have four spray. Okay, so for Quiescent condition, this fuel spray will just uh, flow toward uh, the liner and then it will mix with, with surrounding air. And then if I draw the second one, draw the second one, and then in this case, uh, we apply a straw. In this case, we apply the straw then you expect that this fuel spray will flow like this one. Because of the straw counterclockwise. So it's mean, uh, assuming you, ha you have the spray with certain cone angle, so you expect having more spray area because of this row. So having more spray or larger spray area means we have uh, enhanced uh, fuel air mixing process. And then another important practical thing that can be used to enhance the combustion process is by having a multiple fuel injection. So instead of just a single injection process, we can have three injection uh, nozzle uh, four, six, eight, and so on. For sure, the more nozzle number we have, uh, the higher the injector uh, price is. Next one, let's take a look on the fuel injection system. So this is uh, the, the vital component of the diesel combustion because through this system is the fuel is injected. So the fuel injection system usually supply a pressure of between 1000 to 2000 bar to make sure that we have sufficient uh, fuel atomization. And then usually this uh, injection pressure level uh, depends on the engine size and the type of the combustion system employed. And then large uh, pressure different across the injector nozzle are required so that the injected liquid fuel jet with will enter the chamber at sufficiently high velocity. As I mentioned to you, the velocity difference between the uh, liquid fuel and the surrounding air velocity control the atomization process of this liquid fuel. So if we have higher uh, injection pressure, it means we will have higher velocity difference will result in also a uh, better or more enhanced atomization process. And then uh, we can also have a, a different type of the combustion chamber to enhance uh, this uh, atomization process as well. This feature is showing the a schematic of the uh, fuel injection system. So you, some of this, you might be able to identify it easily. For example, this one is the fuel tank. And then number six here, I think it is a fuel filter. Number one here, checks. Oh, this one is pump. Number one here is fuel pump. And then this one looks like it's a sensor. Yes, this is rail pressure sensor. And number three here, this popular, component it's common rail this is used to make sure that the uh, pressure here are uniform 
so that the fuel is injected uniformly between the cylinder it's called common rail and then number four here is pressure limiter and then five here is the injector so each cylinder has one injector and then eight here i believe this is ecu this is used to control the amount of the injection based on several parameter here measured by several sensor here number nine here is the engine speed sensor number 10 is the face sensor 11 is a pedal transfer sensor and there is also a boost pressure sensor v for sure and so on this feature is showing the detail of the fuel uh, delivery system inside the injector so the component here consists of the uh, barrel number three and then number four here is the plunger this plunger can move up and down and then number one here is the entrance of the fuel uh, into the injector and then number two here is going into the nozzle so the level of the fuel uh, flowing into the nozzle here is controlled by the relative position of the groove at the plunger here and the uh, gallery entrance here so on the first feature on the left side here it is the condition where we have maximum delivery so in this case the fuel enter from uh, the left and then uh, it's move up okay and then it's going into the nozzle and then the next one you can see that the uh, groove that is at plunger here is at different position relative to the uh, nozzle entrance here so this is the condition where we have a partial delivery so in this case the fuel is still flowing from the left some of the fuel will move up flowing into the nozzle some of the fuel here will move to the right so this is partial delivery and then on the most right feature here this is where we have a zero delivery so in this case we'll, the fuel will move from the left and then all of the fuel will move to the right so in this case there is not any fuel moving into the nozzle and then on the bottom feature here is the mechanism to control the position of the groove at the plunger here relative to this entrance this number one so it is controlled by this two teeth rack here and this uh, rack uh, movement is controlled by the ECU and ECU control this uh, movement based on several parameters for example like engine speed and then required a load uh, and then fee and so on this is uh, showing the cutaway of a diesel injector and you can see in here several uh, main component for example in this case you have number eight here is the uh, nozzle needle and then the nozzle tip will be somewhere here number one here is the palm plunger so and then the fuel amount here is controlled by this mechanism 14 and 15 so this one is camshaft and uh, roller uh, rocker arm here control the moving of the plunger here So uh, the most important part of the injection system is the nozzle. So this is at the tips of, of the uh, injector part here. And on the right side here, you can see uh, schematic of this 
nozzle so for example number one here you can see it is a throttling pintle nozzle and then to A to B here is the side view and front view and then number three this one is a kind of hole type nozzle with a conical blind hole and then number four here it's hole type nozzle with cylindrical uh, blind hole and then number five here is suckless nozzle so shock volume here you can see this is shock volume so right now there is a technology trend they try to minimize this shock volume because this shock volume is one of the source for the unburned hydrocarbon because at the end of the, at the, end of the injection there will be a few remaining in this shock volume and the flame won't be able to uh, go farther inside the sack volume which result in the unburned hydrocarbon at the end of the combustion process this is another cutaway of the injector but this one is electronically controlled so you will see some electronic component in this injector that is used to control the amount of or the uh, operation of this injector so uh, regarding the fuel uh, injected amount so in this case the amount of the injected fuel is controlled by the pressure different so in here we have uh, m dot equal to cd cd here is the discharge coefficient and then a n here is the nozzle area so c d time the physical nozzle area here equal to the effective uh, nozzle area and then rho here is the density of the fuel so you can see here that this m dot is directly controlled by uh, the pressure uh, different or uh, the injected pressure so if we assume a constant pressure drop across the nozzle and constant nozzle open area during the injection period then we can get this uh, total fuel mass uh, by using this formula 10.15 so in this case the total injected uh, fuel is one can a function of the injection pressure and the engine speed this capital n and then this delta theta here is the uh, injection period okay we have uh, completed this diesel combustion topics and then next one we will talk about the uh, engine emission so from the spark ignition combustion as well as the diesel combustion